Hello viewers, we are Darunal taking you through the story of for A Level Pure Mathematics and this video we're going th to go through the topic of quadratics and polynomials. So this video is suitable for students in both senior 5 and senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So before we start, let's first look at the course outline for math paper 1 or pure mathematics. So this paper is divided into five parts. The first part is algebra and two questions come in section A and two questions come in section B from this topic and these are the topics. Then the second part is trigonometry. One question comes in section A, one in section B and these are the topics. Then the third part is geometry. One comes in section A, one comes in section B and these are the topics. Then fourth is vectors. One question comes in section A, one in section B and these are the topics. Then the last one is calculus, three come in section A and three in section B. So the topics which are ticked are the ones which have been covered. So I think realize that the whole of calculus has been covered, the whole of vectors has been covered, and the whole of trigonometry has been covered. This is some good progress. So now we are on algebra and in this video we are going to go through the topic of quadratics and polynomials. So we shall start with what you covered in all levels. So let's start with quadratic expression. So a quadratic expression is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants provided a is not equal to 0. So b can be 0 or c can be 0, but a can never be 0. Because if it is 0, it is ceases to become a quadratic. So let's start with the first part, that is factorization of quadratic expression. So this is a review of what you covered in all levels. So a quadratic expression can be factorized by following the steps below. There are three main steps which you have to follow. The first step is to find some two numbers or integers whose sum is equal to b or is equal to the coefficient of x and product is a times b. So it's equal to the coefficient of s x squared multiplied by c. So when you find those two factors, the second step is to replace the constant b with the sum of the factors obtained. So replace this b with the sum of the factors obtained. We shall see how that is done. And lastly, factorize the expression by grouping the terms. I believe you know what grouping terms means, but we shall see, we shall see how it is done in the example. So assuming they have told you to factorize that a quadratic expression, which is 10x squared plus 29x plus 21, we shall go through the steps. The first step we said that you find the factors of the constant 10 times 21. So this times this gives you 210, and this coefficient is 29. So you find two numbers whose sum is equal to 29 and product is equal to 210. So those numbers will be 15 and 14. So 15 times 14 gives you 210 and 15 plus 14 gives you 29. Now the second step is to replace the constants replace the constant 29 here this one with the sum of these two numbers which is 15 and 14. So when we do that we shall come up with this. So I think you realize that where there was 29, you have put there 15 plus 14. Now when I open this bracket, I'll come up with this, 15x plus 14x. Now third step said, you factorize the resultant expression by grouping the terms. So we are going to group. Grouping means you look at this one alone and also this one alone. So when we look at these two terms, we shall realize that 5x is common. So when I factorize out 5x, you, this one will be 10x squared divided by 5x, you'll remain with 2x, which is here. Then 15x divided by 5x will remain with 3. Then these other two terms, the common factor is 7. So 7, 14x divided by 7, you come up with 2x, which is there. Then 21 divided by 7, you come up with 3, which is there. So that is what they call factorization by grouping. Now still you realize that 
this term and this term are the same so you pull it out and you remain with 5x plus 7 which is here so basically that is how they factorize now shall go to the second part of solving quadratic equations by factorization method so suppose a quadratic expression this can be factorized to give this using the steps shown above it implies that the given quadratic equation which is this equal to zero is it will be will become this because the what is because the whole of this has been factorized to give you this therefore you just come and put it here and then equate it to zero which is here now from this step it implies that this first term can be equal to zero or it is this second term can be equal to zero when this first term is equal to zero x will be equal to negative p and when this is equal to zero x will be equal to negative two so basically that is how they solve quadratic equations by factorization method so there are two methods of solving quadratic equations one can be factorization another one is by using a quadratic formula so consider the general quadratic equation this where a is not equal to zero the quadratic formula used to solve this equation is given by this so this is what we call the quadratic formula or other books call it the bulldozer method so just get this coefficient negative of that coefficient put it here then plus or minus square root of this very coefficient squared minus four times this times that everything you know this word everything must be divided by 2a where a is the coefficient of x squared so when given a correct equation just look at this quotient of x squared let it be a quotient of x it will be b and the constant will be c then you substitute in this formula now in solving a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula there are three possibilities which may arise the first case is when this term is greater than zero now when it is greater than zero it implies that the, co the quadratic equation has two real distinct roots but when it is equal to zero it implies that the equation has repeated roots and when it is less than zero it implies that the equation has no real roots now because of its important role in determining the nature of the roots the term this b squared minus 4ac is referred to as the discriminant of the equation so these conditions are very vital and we shall use them frequently in this video so let's start with question one question one says solve the equation this using the following methods one factors and two quadratic formula so factors means you have to factorize so i'm going to look for two factors whose sum is equal to negative seven and product is equal to one times ten so sum should be negative seven product is ten and those factors will be negative 5 negative 2 so what we are going to do replace negative 7 by negative 5 negative 2 when we do that we shall come up with this now we are, we are going straight with this because here the coefficient was 1 if there was a coefficient here we would have replaced this with this but when the coefficient is 1 you just go get this factor put it here and get this factor put it here and that will be factorizing the next it implies that when this is zero this will be five and when this is zero this will be two that is what we call factorization method now we shall go to quadratic formula quadratic formula we must realize that the quotient of a x squared is one coefficient of x is negative seven and constant is ten therefore quote the quadratic formula and then substitute where there is b put it here so here it was negative seven but therefore negative b will be positive seven then b squared will be 49 a is 1 c is 10 a is 1 so when i substitute and simplify i come up with this 7 plus or minus 3 everything divided by 2 therefore when i use minus i'll come up with x equal to 2 and when i use plus i'll come up with x equal to 5 i think we realize that they give the same answer therefore when told to solve a quadratic equation it is you to choose either to use factors or quadratic formula unless they specify 
So now we shall go to question 2 which came from your name 2016 paper 1 question 5 and says given that this and this and this have a common factor but a find the factors of this and that then part b find the value of a in this expression so we have to factorize so when i factorize i have first factorize that one for this one i look for the factors whose sum is positive 7 and product is negative 8 those two factors are 8 and, neg and negative 1 that is why here where there was 7 you put, put there 8 and negative 1 the next is to factorize by grouping. So grouping this one, the common factor is 2x, meaning we shall remain with x plus 4. Here the common factor is negative 1, so we shall remain with x plus 4. Then x plus 4 is common, therefore here to remain 2x minus 1, which is here. That is this expression. What about this other one? So we shall also look at the four factors whose sum is four, negative 4, sorry, whose sum is positive 3 and product is negative 4. Those two factors are 4 and negative 1. Therefore, replace 3 by 4 and negative 1 to come up with that. And then factorize by grouping. For these two, the common factor is x, so in bracket shall remain with x plus 4. This one, the common factor is negative 1, so shall remain with x plus 4 in the bracket. So x plus 4 is common, therefore shall remain with x minus 1, which is here. So those are the factors in part A which they wanted. Now we shall go to part B. So these are what we call the factors. This x minus 1 is a factor, x plus 4 is a factor, 2x minus 1 is a factor, x plus 4 is a factor. So now we shall go to part B. Part B says find the value of A in this, expre in this expression. So the common factor is x plus 4. And they told us that that common factor is for all these three equations. So let fx be equal to this, which is, so let this correct expression be equal to fx. Therefore, when I put this factor here, I must get 0. Therefore, when I substitute, when I open brackets and simplify, I'll come up with the value of a as 26, and that will be the answer. So now we shall go to question 3 which came from your neighbor 1997 paper 1 question 2 and says find the values of k for which the equation this has repeated roots. Then they said what are these repeated roots? So you have come and first write the given equation then next is to cross multiply and after that you shall rearrange and collect like terms to come up with a quadratic equation. Now from here we shall realize that we shall remember that for repeated roots b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So b is negative k plus 1. a is positive 1 which is the quotient of x squared and c is the constant which is positive k plus 1. So when I substitute, substitute for b which is negative k plus 1, it has to be squared. a is 1, then c is k plus 1. So now next is to factorize. So when I factorize, you realize that k plus 1 is common, so it will come out then here we, we are going to remain, remember it was squared, so we have removed 1k plus 1, meaning that we are still remaining with k plus 1. Now this negative has gone because of this square. Therefore k plus 1 is here, then here this side, this k plus 1 has gone, so we shall remain with the negative 4, which is here. Then for this bracket, k plus 1 minus 4 gives you k minus 3. That means that either k plus 1 is equal to 0, and that gives you k k plus 1 is equal to 0, that gives you k equal to negative 1, or k minus 3 is equal to 0, and that gives you k equal to 3. So, I think you remember that we said, when they uh, are repeated roots, x will be equal to negative b over 2a in the notes. So, here we are going to substitute for b and for a. So, now that we know b, we can come and say that when k is equal to 3, we should come and substitute here for k to come up with x as 2. And when k is equal to negative 1, come and substitute here for k and, be, and get the value of x as 0. Therefore, the, the repeated roots will be 2 and 0. 
So now we shall go to question 4 which came from UNEB 1989 paper 1 question 1b and says solve the equation exponent negative exponent 2x minus 4 exponent x plus 3 exponent 3 equal to 0. So this e means exponent. So what you are going to do shall come and say that let y be equal to exponent x therefore from this equation y the, this one will become y squared and this one will become 4y and this will remain 3 and 0. So now you have got a quadratic equation in y let's first factorize it. So here it is up to you you can choose to use bulldozer method or factorization. So when I choose factorization I have to look for a sum of negative 4 and a product of positive 3 which gives you factors as negative 1 negative 3. So when I come and replace, I'll come up with this. Remember we said, as long as this quotient is is 1, these factors, you can from these factors, you can just go straight to factorization, to, fact, to this factorization. So this is y minus 1 and y minus 3. Therefore, y equal to 1 or y is equal to 3. But remember, the question had only x. We are the ones who introduced in the y. So we, shall, we have to go back and get the value of x. So where there is y, we shall put there e to power x. So here when y is equal to 1, e exponent x will be equal to 1. And when y is equal to 3, exponent x will be equal to 3. So to make x the subject, x will be here x will be equal to lean 1 and here x will be equal to lean 3. So I believe by now you have already covered natural logarithms and uh, calculus. So lean 1 will give you 0 and lean 3 will give you 1.0986. And now we shall go to question 5 which came from your name 1988 paper 1 question 3b and says using the substitution this or otherwise find the real roots of the equation this. So that is the given equation, let it be equation 1. And this way, and let this one be equation 2. Now when I square, remember this one is in, is to power 4. So when I, I have to square this, and when I square that, I'll be able to get an equation with, with a power 4. So when I square, expand this, I'll come up with that. So now we have got a power 4. And let it be equation 3. So now I, I want to use elimination method. So if I say 2 times equation 3, when I apply 2 throughout this, minus equation 1, this is what I'm going to come up with. So 2 times this gives you this, and this equation 1 is here. So when I subtract, I'll come up with this equation, to call it equation 4. Then next is equation 40, equation 2 multiply 45 throughout equation 2 plus equation 4. I'll come up with this. So remember I said my aim is to eliminate x and remain with y. So I'm using elimination method. So if you look at this equation, x squared has negative 45. And when you look at this one, x squared has positive 1. Therefore, to eliminate x squared, I have to multiply this equation by 45. To, so that they have the same coefficient as this. So that is why I had to multiply 45 throughout equation 2 to come up with this line. Then this is equation 4 and I, when I add the 2, I'll be able to eliminate x squared. So this one has gone, this one has also gone, then this, this 45 is here, then this 2y squared is here, then here negative 63 has remained and it is there. So now I've got a quadratic in y, so I'll have to solve it. I can choose to either use bulldozer method or factorization. So in this case, I've used factorization method, where the factors will be 42 and 43. The factorizing by grouping, this one, the common factor is 2y and I remain with y plus 21. Here, the common factor is 3 and I remain with y plus 21. Now, y plus 21 is common. Pull it out and I remain with 2y plus 3, which is here. So that means that y, y is equal to negative 1.5 or y is equal to negative 21. 
but remember we are the ones who, we are the ones who introduced in the y so we have to remove it and put the values of and replace it with x so for y equal to negative 1.5 so this is negative this will now be equal to negative 1.5 so I collect like terms to get a quadratic in x so here I can use bulldozer method to come up with the values of x as those ones then for y equal to negative 21 still come and substitute get a quadratic then use bulldozer method so in this case there will be no real roots why b I think remember the condition that b if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0 then there are no real roots so in this case b squared is negative 4 squared which is 16 but 4 times 21 is 80 is 84 which is already greater than this that is why there are no real roots therefore the values of x they wanted are these two so that was the part of factorization and solving quadratic equation now we shall go to the next part of finding maximum or minimum value of a quadratic expression so here we shall see that the maximum or minimum value of a quadratic expression which is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c can be obtained by going through the following steps so there are some steps which need to be followed the first step is to let that quadratic expression be equal to fx then step 2 is to factorize out a so a make this coefficient positive 1 by factorizing it out so that is why here I'll put it out to a now in this box bracket the coefficient of x squared is equal to positive 1 so step 3 says for the expression inside the bracket add it to and subtract from it the square of half the coefficient of x so the coefficient of x is two is b over a so half of this coefficient will be b over 2a but we said it has to be squared so that's why you see this square so you're going to add and also subtract from it so that's why you see here plus this and minus this in other words we're introducing in what we call an innocent expression then step 4 is complete square so when you complete squares it becomes x plus b over 2a squared so completing squares this is what it means so it means that when you look at these first three terms they'll be equal to x plus b over 2a everything squared I think remember that when you try to expand this one you'll be able to come up with this first three terms so that is what completing squares means so that those first three terms will be replaced by this bracket then step five open the brackets when I open brackets this a by this and this by this and this through this it gives you that then that is step five now step six says since this one is greater than or equal to zero it can never be negative it implies that the quadratic expression is maximum or minimum when this is equal to zero so when they ask for maximum or minimum value what you need to do is to equate this look at this square and equate it to zero note that the function fx equal to ax squared plus bx plus c has a maximum value if the value of a is negative and the minimum value if the value of a is positive so this function can either have maximum or minimum now how do you know that it is maximum or minimum so if you look at the coefficient of x squared if the coefficient of x squared is if the coefficient of x squared is negative it implies that it is a maximum value but if it is positive it implies that it has a minimum value i think you remember that so when this is it will be that if it was if the coefficient is negative and this if the coefficient is positive i think you remember that and uh, curve sketching of calculus so then now let's go through some of the questions question one came from uneb 2018 paper one question four and says express the function fx equal to this in the form this 
in other words they want you to complete squares then hence find the minimum value of the function so we are going to go through the same steps we have gone through so the first step we are is already catered for because this expression has been led to be equal to fx then next we shall go to the second step second step is to introduce an innocent expression that innocent expression will be equal to the square of half the coefficient of x now coefficient of x is 12 of now half this coefficient will be 12 over 2 but it has to be square that is why you see this square and we say that innocent expression you add and also subtract the next step was to complete square so this step I've only simplified this because 12 over 2 is 6 which is here and here now we'll go to the next step of completing squares complete squares the whole these first three terms will be equal to x plus 3 x plus 6 everything squared then you remain with this and this then from there when I use the calculator negative this is 30 negative 36 plus 32 gives you negative 4 so in that case we have expressed it in this form but they also wanted the minimum value of the function minimum value remember we said the whole of this which is squared is equated to zero so we shall just put zero here and I'll remain with negative four which will be our minimum value so that is how they get minimum or maximum value just look at the one which is squared and equate it to zero Question 2 came from your neighbor 1991 paper 1 question 2 a and says express this in the form this and hence deduce the minimum value where p, q and r are constants. So still we shall go through the same steps. The first step is to let fx be equal to this given expression. The next is to make the coefficient of x squared equal to 1 by factorizing out this fact, this coefficient. The next is to introduce an innocent expression. So half of this is 11 over 4, but it has to be squared. That's why you see 11 over 4 squared. Plus or minus. So always remember that. It has to be plus and minus for it to become an innocent expression. The next is to complete squares. So these first three terms will become x plus 11 over 4, everything squared. The next is to use a calculator for this one, negative 11 over 4 squared. Now remember that this square is only on 11 over 4 and not on the negative. So, ne so uh, you have to first get 11 over 4 squared, then you put a negative there. So negative 11 over 4 squared plus 3 will give you negative 73 over 16. Then open this, remove this box bracket to become 2 this plus this. So this times this gives you this and this times this gives you that. So in that case, it has been expressed in this form. Therefore, the hence part, they wanted to reduce the minimum value. Minimum value, remember we said, the whole of this becomes 0. So we shall come and get 2 times 0 minus 73 over 8 to become negative 73 over 8 as our minimum value. Then question 3 says, by completing squares, find the greatest value of this. I think you realize that here, the coefficient of x squared is the negative that is why they talked about greatest value so still first let this and remember we say that make this coefficient of x squared positive 1 that is why you have factorized out negative 1 here the next is to fact complete squares to come up with this so I think you remember by now you know how to complete how this comes about to this. First of introducing an innocent expression. If you have forgotten, then you will be able to come up with, to this step. Then from there I can simplify this minus this gives you this. Then remove this box bracket to come up with this. Then from there I can collect like rearrange this start with a positive value followed by this then I can come and so that the greatest value will be equal to 
the whole of this becomes 0 to become 10 minus 0 which is positive 10. Then question 4 says by completing squares find the greatest value of this and the value of x for which it occurs. So still we shall first let then make the coefficient of x squared positive 1. So yeah it is not yet positive. Okay yeah it is positive 1 because this is 3 over 3. So I can simplify to make it positive 1. When it is positive 1 that is when I can complete squares. So when I complete squares I'll come up with this line. Then use a calculator the whole of this gives you negative 5 over 3. Then this three of this negative three multiplies each term to come up with this part. So with that I've factorized now I, I can come and set the greatest value by equating this to zero. So that is zero, so the greatest value will be positive five. But they also wanted the value of x for which it occurs. So the value of x for which it occurs is when you equate this to zero. So x minus two squared equal to 0, I'll be able to come up with the value of x as 2 and that is what they wanted. So you can conclude that the greatest value of this is 5 and the value of x for which it occurs is 2. So that has been the second, the part of maximum and minimum value of a quadratic expression. Now we shall go to roots of a quadratic equation. Now this is why I need to be as attentive as possible. So consider the general quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero where a is not equal to zero. So for it to be a quadratic equation, expression or equation, the equation of x squared must not be equal to zero. So when I divide through by a, I'll come up with this. Now the reason why I divide through by a is to make the coefficient of x squared positive one. Now if alpha and beta are roots of the equation, of this equation 1, it implies that the factors will be x minus alpha and x minus beta. So when I expand this, I'll come up with this line. And when I collect like terms, I'll come up with this equation. So this equation is very vital. I think realize that if from this, I can, this is sum of roots, that is why you come here it is sum of roots and this is product of roots. But there is a minus here, so you should be keen. It is x squared minus sum of roots multiplied by x plus product of roots equal to zero. Now this equation will be used more, more frequently. And also this one will be used more frequently when I, when I compare, you realize that this will be equating it to this you come up with alpha plus beta equal to negative b over a now negative because this was negative alpha plus beta so when i take the negative this side i'll come up with negative a over negative b over a then product of roots to compare this with this it will be c over a so these two are very very vital in this part we are on so to use them, we also need to know some. We need to have some knowledge on expansion. So expansion, this is what this is a review. Alpha plus beta squared will be equal to alpha squared plus beta squared plus two alpha beta. Now most students, the mistake they make is that they, when they see this square, they think that is just this squared plus this squared, and they stop there. But always remember that they use this two alpha beta. I think you remember that from your O level. Then also, it, that is when it is squared. What if it is tubed? If it is tubed, it becomes alpha tubed plus beta tubed plus 3 alpha beta in brackets alpha plus beta. So always remember these expansions because they are very useful in this part. Now the reason why we made this is we wanted to make to look for a way of making this the subject. So when I make this a subject, I'll come up with this line. And when I make this the subject, I'll come up with this line. So this is our part of interest. That alpha squared plus beta squared is equal to alpha plus beta in bracket squared minus 2 alpha beta. Then alpha tubed plus beta tubed is equal to alpha plus beta everything's tubed minus 3 alpha beta 
in brackets alpha plus beta. Now furthermore, this was for sum. What if it was for subtraction? So when this becomes minus, it implies that negative beta squared becomes positive. That is why here it is, remains positive. But here it becomes negative. But the good thing I already know that the whole of this is here. So I'll come and replace it with this to come up with this box bracket. Then when I open this box bracket, I'll come up with alpha plus beta everything squared minus 4 alpha beta. So this is the expansion this is the expression for alpha minus beta everything squared. What about what if this was negative? It implies that this becomes negative and this becomes negative and this also becomes negative. Now from these ones of subtraction we shall come up with this that alpha minus beta will be equal to square root because remember this was alpha minus beta squared so to get alpha minus beta I have to get square root of this which is here. Then what if it is alpha squared minus beta squared we have to remember that this is difference of two squares and to be difference addition. Then if it is this it implies that I will come and make this one the subject to become take this one this side to become that. So those expansions are very, very vital in this topic. So with that knowledge, let's go through some of the questions. So question, so part A. Now these questions have been for categorized into three parts. Now the first part or part A are the involves expressions involving sum and product of roots. So question one comes from your neb, 2008 paper one question six. Like I told you. At this point you need to be as attentive as possible so it says given that alpha and beta are the roots of the equation which is this express alpha minus beta squared sorry as alpha squared minus beta squared and alpha cubed plus beta cubed in terms of p and q so here that is the given equation and from that you remember that sum of roots of this equation will be negative of this it was negative of this uh, as long as here the equation is positive one to be negative of this will be the sum of roots and positive this will be the product of roots therefore alpha plus beta will be equal to negative p and alpha times beta will be equal to positive two now part a they want this expression so like we say this one is the same as difference of two squares so to become plus minus but you have already seen that this one will be equal to this and when I expand further I'll come up with this. This one we have already done. I think you remember that. So in the end we shall come up with this. So this is what I wanted. So if you can remember this there is no need to go through these steps. So when I substitute I remember that alpha plus beta is negative p and alpha beta is positive q. So come and substitute for this. So negative p squared becomes positive and this one comes where there's alpha beta we put 2. Therefore alpha bit alpha minus beta remember this was now squared. Now alpha minus beta will become square root of this. Therefore this one will be equal to remember now our aim was to first get this subtraction which we have got now therefore we can come and substitute in this part so this minus here we are going to put there this and this plus we are going to put there negative p so in the end we are going to come up with that expression then for part b they wanted this alpha cubed plus beta cubed so i think you also remember that expansion it is equal to this therefore I come and substitute alpha plus beta is that and this product is that and this one is here so in the end I come up with 3 p two minus 3 minus p cubed next is question 2 question 2 says given that alpha and beta are the roots of the equation this show that this is equal to that so from that given equation, it implies that alpha, the sum is negative of this. Now negative of negative b is positive b and positive and the product is positive c. 
now from this left hand side starting from this left hand side you're going to expand this so open brackets for this side it gives you this then you shall remember that this one i think you remember that this one is the same as this we saw it The next is now to substitute for sum and product. So, pro alpha beta is C. So, where there is this, we shall put there C, C. Then, alpha plus beta is B. So, we shall put here B. Now, next is to simplify to get this required expression. So, when I simplify, I'll come up with this. Then, I'll rearrange. So, the whole of these three terms will give you negative C minus 1 squared. And that is what they wanted so now we shall go to question 3 which say that the roots of the equation this are alpha and beta find the value of alpha to power 4 plus beta to power 4 so that is the equation that meaning that remember we said this question must be equal to positive 1 so that is why you divide through by 3 to come up with this therefore the sum will be called negative of this which is negative 2 over 3 and the product will be positive of this which will be negative 5 over 3 now we, we are not given the one of power 4 the expansion of four power 4 but we do think we know the expansion 4 squared that is why we put you expect this one in terms of squared alpha power 4 is the same as alpha squared squared and beta to power 4 is the same as beta squared squared Therefore, this one now will give us this, if we compare. But also, this one is still has a square, so we are also sim still simplified to come up with this. Therefore, now we can substitute because we now have some add products. So, sum is that, product is that, product is that. So, next is now to use a calculator and come up with that value. Now we shall go to question 4, which is that alpha squared and beta squared are roots of this equation. If alpha and beta are both positive, find the value of alpha beta and the value of alpha plus beta. Now here they have somehow done the reverse because previously we have been, we have been given alpha and beta as the roots. But now in this case we are given alpha squared and beta squared as the roots. So we need to be keen with that. So what does that mean? It means that sum of roots will be now alpha squared plus beta squared and product of the roots will be alpha squared times beta squared. Therefore from that equation to imply that the sum will be alpha squared plus beta squared which will be called negative of this to give you positive 21 and product will be positive of this which will be positive 4. Therefore this one is the same as this from indices. Therefore alpha beta is the same as square root of 4 but remember we said they are positive, therefore we take the positive value alone, which is 2. Then for part B, from this expression, we know that this one is the same as this. Therefore, we are going to substitute. This is 21 and this one we have got it as 2. Therefore, we shall make this one the subject and we get square root and it will be the value. So, we only take the positive value. That is part A. Now, part B is proofs involving sum and product of roots. So, we are still using the same knowledge, but what you have done, what I'm doing, I'm trying to categorize the question so that you can easily follow. But you are going to use the same method of same procedure, sum and product of roots. So, question one came from your name, 2006, paper one, question one. It says, show that when the quadratic expression this and this have a common root then this will be equal to that so we let the common root be alpha therefore it implies that x is equal to alpha so when i come here and replace x with alpha i'll come up with this also when i come here and replace x with alpha i'll come up with this so those are the two equations now when I subtract them, I'll have to, I'll be able to eliminate alpha squared and remain with only alpha. So in this case, my aim is to make alpha the subject, and when I make it the subject, I'll come up with alpha being equal to negative of c minus 2 over b minus p, and that is equation 3. 
So now next is to substitute equation 3 into equation 1. So where there is alpha in this equation 1, we are going to substitute it with the expression in equation 3. And we shall come up with this. So the LCM is B minus P squared. And when, when I multiply thread by the LCM, I'll come up with that line. The next is, now this one is already part of what is required, so we shall, not be, we shall not tamper with it. Now we shall tamper with only these ones. That is why I've taken the whole of this, this side. Then from there I realize that B minus P is common, so I'll pull it out. Here I'll remain with B in brackets C minus 2, which is here. And here I'll remain with C in brackets B minus P, which is here, because here it was squared. Then when I open this, then I open these brackets inside this box bracket, I come up with this. Then simplifying, you realize that this and this can cancel, so I remain with CP minus B2. So now we shall go to question two, which came from Geneva 1994, paper one, question three A, and says. Given that alpha and beta are roots of the equation this, express this in terms of p and 2 and deduce that for one root to be the square of another, p cubed minus 3p2 plus 2 squared plus 2 is equal to 0. Must hold. So for that given equation, sum of roots is that and product of roots is that. I believe by now you know how it comes about. Now for this one, we have to expand it to come up with this. Then from there, here, we shall factorize out negative 1 to come up with this. And I think you remember the expression for this. So we shall come and put it there. The next is to substitute. Where there is sum, we shall put there that. Because sum is negative p. So this was product is here. Sum is here product is here, sum is there, and product is there. So when I simplify this, I'll come up with this. Therefore, in the end, I'll come up with this as the first part. But they also told us to deduce that if one root is the square of the of another, deduce that this is equal to zero. So one root is a square of another. What does that mean? So for the deduction part, we have this one, we have this expression from the previous part. Remember, deduction is such from where we stopped. Now, one root is a square of another. It implies that if, it implies that alpha will be the square of beta, because the roots are alpha and beta. Now, when I substitute, I'll come up with this. So whether it's alpha put there beta squared, alpha put there beta squared. So from here I realize that beta squared minus beta squared gives you zero. Therefore, zero will be equal to this. And when I rearrange, I'll come up with what they want it. So now shall go to question three, which came from your neb 1993, paper one, question three B, and says, given the equations this and this have the common root, show that this is equal to this. So this is almost similar to the one in question one. So let's go through the same steps. 1 is let the common root be alpha, therefore substitute alpha in this equation to come up with this and also in this equation to come up with that. Then subtract the 2 to come up with this expression, therefore make alpha the subject and to be equal to that. Now next is substitute alpha in either equation 1 or equation 2. So when I substitute in equation 1, I'll come up with that. The LCM is m minus p squared. So multiply m minus p squared throughout to come up with that line. So this one, we have got what they wanted. So we shall take the, the remaining part the other side and deal with it alone. So in this case, m minus p is common. Pull it out to remain with this. Then open these small brackets to come up with this. Then you realize that this one and this one cancels, you remain with 
this and that. Therefore, you'll be able to come up with the required expression. So now we shall go to question 4, which came from your name, 1991, paper 1, question 2b, and says, If alpha and beta are roots of this, express this in terms of alpha, in terms of a, b, and c, and hence the deuce, the condition for one root to be twice the other. So this is what we have. Make the condition of x squared equal to positive 1, then get the sum of roots and product of roots. But they wanted this value, the value of this, so shall come and write it here and expand it to come up with this, simplify it, come up with that. But you also know that this one can be expressed in this form. Therefore, simply collect like terms, come up with this line, and then substitute. Product, product was c over a, and sum is negative b over a. So in the end, you'll come up with 9c over a minus 2b squared over a squared. So in that we have expressed this in terms of a, b, and c. But remember they also told us to reduce the condition for one root to be twice the other. So one root is twice the other. What does that mean? So for the hence part we have said that this one, this is what we have got from the previous part. But one root is twice the other. Therefore... It implies that if beta is 2 alpha, it implies that whether it's beta, we shall put there 2 alpha and 2 alpha here. So still we realize that this one is equal to 0, therefore the whole of this expression will be equated to 0. Cross multiply to come up with that and rearrange to get the required condition. So that is the condition for one root to be twice the other. So question 5 came from your name, 1991. Paper 1, question 9a, and says, Given that the roots of the quadratic equation, this, are in the ratio p to 2, show that ac in brackets p plus 2 squared is equal to b squared p2. So that is the equation, quadratic equation. So here, they were supposed to be equal to 0. So you added there in the question. So make the quotient of x squared 0, sorry, make the quotient of x squared 1 to come up with that. Therefore, now we shall come and say that let the roots be alpha and beta. When they are alpha and beta, the ratio of those roots we are given that this is p to 2. That's why you see alpha to beta is equal to p to 2. This means that alpha over beta is equal to p over 2. Therefore, when I make alpha the subject, it will be equal to p beta over 2. And sum of roots is equal to negative b over a, which is here. So I come and substitute for alpha, which is here. Then make beta the subject, sorry, factorize out beta to remain with this. Get the LCM of this to come up with this. And our aim is to make beta the subject, and beta will be equal to that. So now I have alpha and beta. So what I'm going to do... I'll just come here and say so that product of roots is alpha beta equal to c over a. So come and substitute for alpha, it gives you this. So while there's alpha, put there this to come up with that. Then now substitute for beta to come up with that. So next is to simplify until I get the required expression. So square the whole of this squared gives you this part. So in the end, I realize that here, one, this is 2 squared and here there is 2. So this 2 will cancel with 1, 2 here. That's why you see a 2, a 1, 2. Then here, here this a will cancel with 1, a. That's why you see a only 1, a. The next is cross multiply and rearrange to get the required expression. And that is what they wanted. So now we shall go to question 6, which says that the roots of the equation this differ by 2. Show that this is equal to that. 
So let the roots be alpha and alpha minus 2 because they say they differ by 2. So if one is alpha, the other one will be alpha minus 2. Therefore, sum of roots will be that. So open brackets to come up with that. Make alpha the subject to come up with that. What about product of roots? Product of roots will be that. Open brackets to come up with that. Then substitute for alpha to come up with that. Then next square this. So expand the numerator alone gives you this. The numerator alone gives you that. Then multiply through by the LCM to come up with that. Then expand, collect like terms, and rearrange to get the required expression. So now we shall go to question 7. Question 7 says, given that this and this have a common factor, this, where P2 and B are non-zero, show that this is equal to that. So for, com for factor B, x minus B, it implies that x is equal to B. Therefore, come here and replace where there is x put there B to come up with equation 1. Then also come here where there is x put there B to come up with this equation 2. So my aim is to eliminate B squared. So I'll say 3 throughout, multiply thro 3 throughout equation 1 and subtract, it and subtract equation 2 from it. When I do that, I'll come up with that expression, and that in the end, I'll come up with 3pb plus 2chu equal to 0. Therefore, when I make b the subject, b will be equal to negative 2chu over 3p, and that is equation 3. Now, substituting equation 3 into equation 2 will give me that. So, I'll expand this to come up with that. Then multiply through by the LCM to come up with that. So you realize that this 2, 1, 2 can cancel with this remain with 2, 4, 2 plus 3p squared equal to 0. And rearrange to get the required expression. So now we shall go to question 8, which says that if the equations this and this have a common root, show that this is equal to that. So here we shall just say that let the common root be beta. Then that implies that x is equal to beta, like we've already done. So where there is x here, put there b beta to come up with that equation. And also where there is x here, put there beta to come up with that equation. So my aim is to eliminate beta squared. So I'll multiply c throughout this one so that when I subtract, beta squared can cancel. So when I subtract, I'll come up with this and make beta the subject to come up with that part. So now that I've got beta, I'll substitute equation 3 into equation 1 to come up with that. So that is equation 1. Substitute beta to come up with that. Then multiply throughout by the LCM to come up with that. So here we, shall, we are still simplifying because here we realize that P is common. There is P here, there is P here, there is P here. So this P will cancel, this P will cancel, and here one P will cancel. That's why P here is still there. Then I'll take the whole of this the other side to come up with this sign. So now here, if you look at these two terms, a squared, then multiply by a squared is common in this, both this and this, which is here, and also c minus 2 is common, which is here. So what I'm going to do, I'll factor them out. So this top part, this goes, this goes, I remain with c plus 3, which is here. Then this part, this goes, and one goes here to remain with c minus 2 here. So when I simplify this one, realize that this c cancels away. Then 3 minus negative 2 gives you 5. That is why you see 5 here. And this one is here. And this one is here. So now we shall go to question 9, which says, given one root is the square of the other in the equation this, prove that this is equal to that. So one root is the square of the other. So let one root be one of the roots be beta. It implies the other root will be beta squared. 
therefore sum of roots will be equal to negative b over a which is that product of roots will be c over a which is that now when I add these two equations I'll come up with alpha beta plus beta squared plus beta cubed equal to this minus that factorize out beta because it is common to come up with this line then here yeah, I know that this one is the same as negative b over a so I'm going to replace this with negative b over a then get the LCM here to come up with that now this and this will cancel to remain with the numerators alone therefore beta is equal to this but the equation has chubed therefore what I'm going to do I'm going to chub both sides to, come, to become this becomes beta chubed and this one the whole of it is chubed to give you that and the good thing I know that beta chubed here is c over a so I come and substitute for beta chubed here then cross multiply to come up with that so that is what they wanted so now shall go to question 10 which says given that one of the roots of the equation this is a square of the other show that this is equal to 0 so let one root be alpha then the other root will be alpha squared so sum of roots is that negative of this is positive p and product of roots is positive of that which is true like we have done previously so when I add the two equations I come up with that factorize out alpha to come up with that then I substitute because alpha plus alpha squared is equal to p so come and put p there then make alpha the subject and that is equation 1 since alpha is a root it implies that x is equal to alpha therefore from this equation I'll come and replace x with alpha then I know alpha is equal to this so I'll come and substitute it there the next is to multiply through by the LCM to give you that line so when I simplify and factorize I come up with that line now this one is equal, expanding this one gives you this and this one when I expand it I realize that I come up with this so expand this one further to come up with this and this, this one is here so now it's time to collect like terms to come up with that line that I can rearrange to get the required expression so now we shall go to the third part where they want any quadratic equation given the roots of that equation for example they will give you a quadratic equation and its roots then they tell you to find another quadratic equation whose roots are also given for example when you go to question 1 question 1 came from your name 2020 that is last year paper 1 question 14 b and says if alpha and beta are roots of the equation this find the equation whose roots are this and this so in that case we have to remember that the quadratic equation is given by x squared minus sum multiplied by x plus product equal to zero when you remember that then you can easily answer such a question so we shall start with a given equation so for this equation the sum of roots is that and product is that so I believe by now you know where these ones are coming from then for these ones as roots so for these roots it implies that now the sum we have to get the sum of roots and product of roots let's start with the product so product of roots means that you multiply this with this to come up with this part therefore numerator alone are multiplied alone and denominator are multiplied alone so here we've got a product which is already here but this one we have to still expand it because I have to express in terms of sum and product so when I expand the numerator I'll come up with that then still this one can be expanded to come up with this to replace it with that 
So now I have only sum and product, therefore I can substitute. So product is here, substitute with this. Sum is here, substitute. Product is here, substitute. Product is here, substitute. So when I open this bracket in the numerator, I'll come up with this. And from here, when I combine this with this with this, I'll be able to come up with 2 plus 1 squared. So in the end, I'll come up with this. And now, still you realize that this is difference of two squares. So one will be difference, another one will be sum. So that was product of roots. What about sum of roots? Sum of roots, you have to add these two roots given. So when I add, I'll get the LCM to come up with that. Expand to the numerator to come up with that. Rearrange to come up with that. Then factorize here in this by grouping. This one gives you this, and this one gives you that. So I already now have sum and product. So product is this, sum is that, sum is that, product is that. So now that I've got sum of roots and product of roots, I can now write the quadratic equation which they want. So I'll come and say that the required quadratic equation is given by this expression. So I'll come and replace sum here and replace product here. Multiply throughout by the LCM to come up with that. So now we shall go to question 2, which came from UNEB 2019, paper 1, question 6, and says, given that alpha plus beta is equal to this and alpha beta is equal to that, form a quadratic equation whose roots are this. So for this and this as roots, we shall say that product of roots will be this, multiplying the two. So this cancels and this cancels, that's why you see one here. What about sum? Sum of roots, you get LCM to come up with that. Then this one can be expanded to come up with this. Then you can now substitute to come up with negative 11 over 6 as your sum of roots. Therefore, the required quadratic equation is given by in that form. So substitute for sum and for product. Then multiply that by the LCM to come up with this as the required quadratic equation. Then question 3 came from UNEB 2011, paper 1, question 9b, and says the roots of the quadratic equation this are this and this. Show that the quadratic equation whose roots are this and this is given by that. So for this equation, sum is that, product is that. Then for these ones as roots, it implies that you have to first get the product and for the sum also. So product gives you this, expand to give you that. Then correct like terms and factorize, then substitute to give you that. So when I simplify, I'll come up with this as my product of roots. What about sum of roots? So sum of roots shall add the 2 to come up with this, then factorize to come up with this. So then substitute and simplify to come up with that. Therefore, the required equation, quadratic equation will be, given by, will be in that form. So substitute for sum here and product here. And that is what was required. Then question 4 came from your name 2007, paper 1, question 9b, and says, The roots of the, of the equation this are alpha and beta. Form the equation whose roots are this. So for the given equation, the sum and product are that. Then for these roots, we have shall get the sum. And the sum will be equal to, I believe by now we know where these ones are coming from. So the sum will be given by this. What about the product? The product will be given by that. Therefore, the new equation will be in this form. Therefore, come and substitute for the sum and for the product. Then get the, multiply the by the LCM to get this as the required equation. So now shall go to question 5, which came from UNEB 2000, paper 1, question 9b, and says, If alpha and beta are roots of the equation this, find the equation whose roots are this. So for the given equation, sum and product are that. Then for these as roots, we have to get the sum and product. So when you start with the product, 
this one gives you this and therefore expand the numerator to give you that then this one can still be expanded to give you that therefore we can now substitute so when you substitute you shall come up with that simplify and be able to come up with this as the product what about for the sum sum still add get the OCM expand the numerator factorize and this one can still be simplified to that therefore now I can substitute and expand so we have got sum and product of roots therefore the required equation can be got from this expression so come and substitute for sum and for product then apply throughout by the LCM to come up with that so now we shall go to question 6 which came from your name 1999 paper 1 question 1 and says given that the equation this has roots alpha and beta find the equation whose roots are this so for the given equation the sum and product are those for these as roots shall get the product so I'm apply these two to come up with this therefore expand the denominator to come up with that So factorize to come up with this, therefore I can substitute and be able to get the product. Then for the sum, I still do the same, get the OCM. So here I forgot this, this should be a plus, not multiplication. So this should be plus to come up with that. So in the end, we shall be able to come up with 49 over 100 as the sum. Therefore, the required correct equation will now be given by that expression and that gives you some product multiplied by the LCM to give you this as the quadratic equation so now we shall go to question 7 which came from your neb November 1998 paper 1 question 3 and says given that the roots of the equation this are this and that determine the equation whose roots are that so some are similar to the one you have just done but let's do it anyway so for this the sum is that and product is that then for this product is that so simplify and substitute to get that so that is the product of roots what about the sum of roots sum of roots still shall get the LCM and simplify then substitute and get the answer as zero so the product the sum of roots is zero therefore the required correct equation will be given by, will be got from that form substitute for sum and for the product therefore multiply through by the LCM to get this as the required quadratic equation then question 8 came from your March 1998 paper 1 question 9b and says if the roots of the equation this are alpha and beta form the equation whose roots are this and that so for the given equation sum and product is that then for this as roots sum will be given by that so expand to give you that then this one can still be expanded to give you that then substitute and simplify to get zero what about for the product still expand factorize simplify then you can substitute and be able to come up with two as the product so now we have sum and product of roots therefore the required correct equation will be got from this so substitute for sum and substitute for product therefore that will be the quadratic equation so that has been part C now we shall go to remainder theorem and factor theorem so if px is equal to this where a is not equal to 0 so the community of this one is not equal to 0 then px is said to be a polynomial of degree or order n so polynomials are always in this form 
in the variable x now suppose we divide a polynomial px which is this by this using long division method or synthetic method as shown below now here you must have learned about long division but now we are going to learn long division for polynomials so there are two ways of dividing it can be by the long division or by synthetic method so we are going to see all of them and you'll choose for yourself which one is simpler so by long division this is the divisor and this is the polynomial to be divided so I put the divisor here and put this polynomial here okay now in dividing you consider only the highest degree so the highest degree in the polynomial is this and the highest degree in the divisor is that so this divided by this will give you 2x squared so I'll come and write 2x here 2x squared there now next step is to multiply this one throughout this divisor to come up with this line then from there I'm going to subtract those two expressions to come up with this then still I'll say this size degree here divided by this one to come up with negative 2x then repeat the procedure negative 2x by the throughout the divisor gives you this line then subtract the 2 you'll be able to come up with this line then still this one divide by this one you'll come up with positive 3 then positive 3 throughout this multiply throughout this gives you this then next is to subtract when I subtract I'll come up with positive 1 now here I cannot divide because this one is constant and this one is x therefore I have to stop there so when I stop there this is the polynomial this is the divisor and this is what we call the quotient now that has been long division method what about synthetic method so synthetic method is a bit funny but let's learn it anyway so for the synthetic you only write the coefficients coefficient of x cubed is here in descending order x squared is here 5 is here 2 is here then this one it implies that x is equal to 1 so write here x equal to 1 you don't write factor you just write x equal to 1 now how is it done bring this 2 here down that's the first step next step is multiply this this 2 by this and write it here so when I apply one by 2 by 1 gives you 2 and that's why that's what I'll put here then next I'll say this plus this what does it give me it gives you negative 2 so I'll come and write it here then I'm going to repeat the procedure negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 so come and write it here then add two, 5 plus negative 2 gives you 3 so write it here then repeat the procedure 3 times 1 is 3 so write it here then add this plus this gives you one that is here so the what this value at the very end becomes our remainder then this one can give you the divisor now this quotient here using synthetic method is the are uh, these values so I think you realize that remember we said synthetic we only deal with coefficients so this two is here negative 2 is here positive 3 is there so that is how you can extract out the coefficient from synthetic method so those are the two methods of law either long division or synthetic method now the result may be expressed in the identity that polynomial is equal to the divisor multiplied by the quotient plus the remainder I think you can easily memorize that from what you used to do to express a mixed fraction into an improper fraction so if I have for example 4 whole number 1 over 2 it implies that 2 is the divisor 4 is the quotient and 1 is the remainder now when I want to express into an improper fraction what I'll do I'll say 2 multiplied by this 4 plus 1 
everything divided by the divisor. So 2 is the divisor which is here. Then 4 is the quotient which is here plus 1 which is the remainder which is here. So that's, that's one of the easiest way to memorize this expression. So from there now let's say that so in this case that like I said this is what we call the quotient this is what we call the divisor and one is called the remainder therefore in general a polynomial px can be expressed in the form px equal to 2x gx plus rx now in this case 2x is the quotient gx is called the divisor and rx is called the remainder so those are the symbols we should need to remember so the remainder theorem gives a method of finding the remainder without going through the process of long division so it's so that you can easily get the remainder through long division or synthetic method but because those are longer processes we remainder theorem gives a process a, pro, a certain method which can help you to easily get the remainder without going through all that process so how can you do that so it says that if the polynomial this is divided by this the remainder is p alpha in other words when i sub when i divide when i want to divide this with this when i want to divide this polynomial with this to get the remainder i'll just substitute x equal to 1 in this polynomial let's try to do it and we see if i substitute here it will be 2 minus 4 plus 5 minus so let's say this 2 and this 2 cancels the negative 4 plus 5 gives you positive 1 which is which is the remainder and I think remember this is what we got under long division so that is the shorter way which in which remainder theorem is useful it helps you not to go through the long division method to get the remainder so if they only ask for the remainder no need to do long division just use remainder theorem now there's something to note here also that if p alpha is equal to zero it implies that this one is a factor therefore the remainder theorem now becomes factor theorem so each time the remainder is zero it implies that the divisor is a factor if the remainder is not zero it implies the divisor is not a factor so then now let us go through these questions question one says which it came from your neb 2020 which is last year paper one question 9a you say that a polynomial px is given by this expression where 2x is the quotient and ax plus b is the remainder when px is divided by x minus 1 the remainder is 4 and when p when it is divided by x plus 2 the remainder is 1 find the values of a and b so yeah the good thing they have studied for us the expression of px so there is px now when divided by when divided by x minus 1 it implies that x is equal to 1 in this case because this is a factor factor equal to 0 will be able to come up with x plus 1 so x is equal to 1 that means that i'm going to rip where there is x i'll put there 1 when I put 1 here it becomes 0 that's why you see the whole of this is 0 then here a times 1 it be remains a that's why you see here a plus b but remember we said when you substitute in this value with the outcome is what is our remainder and they told us that the remainder is 4 that's why you see here uh, 4 therefore that gives me equation 1 what about 20 divided by x plus 2? It implies that x is equal to negative 2. So come and substitute negative 2 here. The whole of this will become 0. And here it becomes negative 2a. They told us that the remainder is 1. That is why you put 1 here. So we shall come up with equation 2. Now we have two equations and two unknowns. So we have to solve them simultaneously. When I subtract equation 2 from equation 1, I'll be able to come up with 3a equal to 3. Therefore a is equal to 1. Then from equation 1, I'll be able to get the value of b as 3. And that is what they wanted. So now we shall go to question 2, which came from UNEB 2015, paper 1, question 9, and says, 
part a given that fx is equal to this show that f prime x is divisible by x minus alpha so this one it denotes derivative then part b a polynomial px is equal to x cubed plus 4ax squared plus bx plus 3 is divisible by this use the result in a above to find the values of a and b and then solve the equation px is equal to 0 so let's start with part a so part a we know that fx is that then differentiate it to come up with this so differentiating this one bring down the power reduce the power by 1 differentiate the inner bracket to give you positive 1 then this one is here now what we are using we are using product formula now product formula says keep one constant so when I keep this one constant I will differentiate this to give you this then plus now keep this one constant to give you that then differentiate this to give you g prime x so that is how product formula works and the video on product formula is also available on this platform under the videos of Calculus. now for x minus alpha equal to zero x is equal to alpha the common substitute so f prime alpha will give you this which is zero now when it is zero like we said when it is zero it implies that that value is a fact so this is a factor and that means that this one is divisible Th that means that the derivative is divisible by this because it gives a remainder zero so now we are going to part b which is that if the polynomial this is equal to that is divisible by this use the result in a above to find the values of a and b and then solve the equation So for this one, x is equal to 1, therefore come and substitute, this was the polynomial, come and substitute, you get p1, when I substitute, remember they said, it is divisible, meaning that you, it will give a remainder 0, that's why you put 0 there, therefore that is equation 1. Then also, what if, when, when I differentiate this, I'll come up with this, so differentiate this gives you that, this gives you this, this gives you this, and this is 0. And when I substitute in that factor, I still will get the same. It will still be divisible. That's what they have. To, that's what we we proved in part A. Therefore, that gives me equation two, and I can now solve them simultaneously. So one minus two, equation one minus two gives you that gives you the value of A as a quarter. Then from equation one, I'll be able to get the value of B as negative five. Now for the hence part polynomial px is that and the divisor is that therefore I can now here I cannot use synthetic method division because synthetic works for only linear divisors but in this case this one is no longer linear so the only option is to use long division so come and put this divisor here then put the polynomial there then go through the procedures this divide by this is positive x which is there then this x multiplying throughout by this gives you this line subtract the two equations subtract the two expressions will be able to come up with this then still this divide by this will come up with positive 3 positive 3 multiplied throughout by this gives you that then subtract the two you'll be able to come up with zero now because there is zero it implies that there is no because this one zero 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 so there's nothing here therefore it implies that px is equal to this divisor which is this multiplied by this quotient which is here plus zero because there is no remainder here if there's a remainder I would have said plus that remainder Therefore, for p x equal to 0, it implies that the whole of this is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to 1 or x is equal to negative 3. So now we shall go to question 3, which came from UNEB 2013, paper 1, question 10, and says, 
given the equation this part a show that x equal to 2 is the root of the equation so let's start with that so it implies that i'll come and say let fx be equal to this therefore when i substitute 2 here where there is x and i get 0 it implies that there is no remainder therefore x equal to 2 is a root and basically that's what they wanted in part a now for part b they said they deduce the values of alpha plus beta and alpha beta where alpha and beta are the other roots of the equation and hence form a, quad hence form a quadratic equation whose roots are alpha squared plus beta squared so we have to get the other roots for the, to get the other roots we have to do we have to divide so now here the, divide, the divisor is linear meaning you can choose to use synthetic method or long division method so for this case we are going to use both methods so that you can easily grasp the concept let's start with the one for long division so come and put the divisor here and put the polynomial there then start dividing this divide by this is x squared then x squared but throughout this gives you this subtract the two you'll be able to come up with that then still this divide by this will come up with plus 2x plus 2x multiply through by this will give you that then subtract the two you'll be able to come up with this then this divide by this gives you positive 5 positive 5 throughout this gives you that then subtract the two you'll get zero as the remainder Alternatively, you can use synthetic method. So th synthetic means that you come and write the quotients in descending order. So the quotient, of, quotient here is 1, here is 0, here is 1, here is negative 10. Then here the root is x equal to 2. So the first method is to take this one here to become 1. Then 1 times this gives you 2 which you put here then add this 2 to come up with 2 then 2 times this gives you 4 which you put here 1 plus 4 gives you 5 which you put there then 5 times 2 gives you 10 which you put here then negative 10 plus 10 gives you 0 which you put here so this 0 is what proves to you that there is no remainder therefore fx is equal to x minus 2 x squared plus 2x minus plus 5 so this can be got from here that is if you use the wrong division if you used synthetic method then you, you, this one is this coefficient of x squared this 2 coefficient of x this 5 is the constant so that is how any of the two methods can be used now for the other roots it means that you have to look for the roots of these ones so you can shall come and equate it to 0 therefore sum of roots will be this negative of this and product of roots will be positive of that and that is what they wanted but they also wanted us to reduce the equation equation with these roots so sum of these roots will be that which is negative 6 I believe by now you know where it comes from what about the product product will be now 25 therefore the required quadratic equation will be got from that so substitute for sum and product and that is what they wanted so now we shall go to question 4 question 4 came from your neighbor 2007 paper 1 question 9a and says the function fx which is given by this has a factor x minus 2 and a value of 5 when x is equal to th negative 3 find the values find p and q So since this is the factor, it implies that the remainder is 0. Therefore, f2 will be equal to 0, and that gives us equation 1. Then what about f negative 3? f negative 3 will be equal to 5, as it was given in the question. So that gives us equation 2. Now we have two equations and two unknowns, so we have to solve them spontaneously. So equation 2 minus equation 1 will give us 5p equal to 15, therefore p will be equal to 3. Then from equation 1, we can substitute for p and get the value of q as negative 10. Now we shall go to question 5, which came from your neighbor 2005, paper 1, question 14b, and says, Given the polynomial fx equal to this, 
where qx is the quotient gx is the device is this and rx is the remainder show that rx is equal to this when fx is divided by gx so gx will be the divisor and fx will be the polynomial hence find the remainder when fx is divided by x squared minus 9 given that fx divided by x x minus 3 is 2 and when divided by x plus 3 is equal to negative negative 3 So you come and say that let the remainder be in the form rx equal to mx plus n. So when the divisor is linear, the remainder is a scalar. But when the divisor is a quadratic, the remainder will be linear. That is why our remainder is in this form, which is linear. So this is what we are given. We can show come and substitute for gx, which is the divisor. They told us it is this. And the remainder we have still been this form, so it will be that. So when I substitute f uh, for x equal to alpha, uh, this the whole of this will be equal to zero. Therefore, I remain with m alpha plus n, b, and that will be equation one. Then when I substitute x equal to beta, the whole of this will be equal to zero, so I remain with m beta plus n, and that is equation two. Now when I subtract the two equations, n will be eliminated and I remain with only m. So I have here f alpha minus f beta, which is this, and decide it will be m in brackets alpha minus beta, so n will have cancelled. When I make m the subject, m will be equal to that. So I've got m, I also have to get n. So what I'll do, I'll substitute for m in equation 1 to be able to get the value of n. So when I make n the subject, I'll take this one, this side, to come up with this. And when I get the LCM, I'll come up with that expression. Then when I open brackets for the numerator, I'll come up with that. Then next I'll collect like terms to come up with that because f alpha f alpha and minus alpha f alpha cancels. So I'll remain with this positive minus this. So now that I've got the value of m and n, I can come and get the value of rx. So rx, remember, it was mx plus n. So this is m and this is n. So put everything under one LCM. I'll come up with that. Then collect like terms. F, there's this f alpha and this f alpha to give me this. Then there is this f beta and this f beta to give me this. So I'll, for the hence part, the divisor was this, so therefore when I factorize it, it will become x minus 3, x plus 3. Therefore, one will be alpha, another one will be beta. So this is negative because here it was supposed to be x minus beta, but now it is x plus 3. Meaning negative beta is equal to 3, therefore beta will be equal to negative 3. f alpha is equal to r alpha therefore r three will be equal to two it was given the question and also r negative three is equal to negative three it was given the question therefore come and code the expression for r x and then substitute simplify and come up with the final answer as that so now shall go to question 6 which came from your neighbor March 1998 paper 1 question 9a and says when fx which is this is divided by this the remainder is 2 and fx plus 2 is a factor of fx find a and b so factor means the remainder is 0 so first of all that is fx come and substitute f neg to get f negative 1 and the remainder was 2 therefore I'll come up with equation 1 as that then for x plus 2, come and substitute to get f negative 2. The remainder is 0. Simplify. And that will be equation 2. So those are two equations, two unknowns. I'll have to solve them. So equation 2 minus equation 1 will give me a equal to 5.
then from equation one b will be equal to negative two so now we shall go to question seven which came from your name 1993 paper one question two and says but a when the quadratic expression this is divided by this this and this the remainders are 1 1 and 25 respectively determine the factors of the expression then part b express 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 3 in the form this where 2x is a polynomial is a polynomial in x and a and b are constants determine the value of a and b and the expression 2x so let's start with part a so let fp be equal to this given function then shall come and substitute f1 the remainder was 1 so I'll come up with equation 1 as that what about f2 f2 the remainder is also 1 so I'll come up with equation 2 as that then f negative 1 the remainder was 25 so I'll come up with equation 3 as that so we have three equations and three unknowns so we have to solve them simultaneously equation 2 minus equation 1 will give me 3a plus b equal to 0 and that will be equation 4 then equation 2 minus equation 3 will give me 3a plus 3b equal to negative 24 and that is equation 5 then equation 5 minus equation 4 will give 2b equal to negative 24 therefore b is equal to negative 12 from equation 4 I'll be able to get the value of a as and from equation 1 I'll be able to get the value of C as 9 therefore FP will be equal to that and they told us to get the fact so for the factors sum is negative 12 product is 36 so product will be 4 times 9 and sum will be this therefore the two factors are 6 6 therefore four, we shall replace this with negative 6 negative 6 to give you that line Therefore, by grouping this alone will give me that, and this alone will give me that. Then 2p minus 3 is common, therefore I'll come up with this. So those are the factors they wanted. Then for part b, Have you said they ex express this in the form this in other words this is a divisor so you have to first divide this with this let's first do that so since the divisor is a quadratic the only method will be long division so like we have always done we shall put the divisor here and the polynomial here then you shall start dividing. So this divide by this will give you 2x. So 2x multiplied by everything here will give you that. Then subtract the 2, you'll be able to come up with that. Then still this divide by this will give you positive 3. Now positive 3 multiplied throughout this, you'll, get, you'll be able to get that. Subtract the 2 you'll come up with that so there we stop there because this degree is smaller than the de highest degree of the divisor therefore this will be the remainder this will be the quotient and this is the divisor so you come and say that this is the same as this multiplied by this plus this remainder I think remember that expression therefore by comparison a is negative 3 b is positive 3 and 2x is 2x plus 3 so now we shall go to question 8 which came from your name 1991 paper 1 question 9b and says the expression this is divided by x minus 1 and has a remainder 8 when divided by x minus 2 
find Roman 1 a and b and Roman 2 the remainder when the expression is divided by x plus 2 using synthetic approach so here they have specified the method to use in division in getting the remainder so that let px be equal to that therefore p1 will give you that so it's a factor divisible so therefore the remainder will be 0 then p2 the remainder is 8 that is why you see uh, 8 so there are two equations two unknowns if you solve them simultaneously when I subtract equation 2 minus equation 1 I'll come up with that therefore a will be equal to negative 17 then from equation 1 I'll be able to get the value of b as 16 So now we shall go to part B, remainder. Now we cannot use remainder theorem. The only option to use is the synthetic approach. Therefore, we shall come here and write that by synthetic method, we shall come up with that. So remember here we write coefficients. So this coefficient of no constant, coefficient of x power 1, x power 2, x power 3, x power 4, x power 5, x power 6 and x power 7 so when you look at this we only have x power 7 x power 3 and a constant that is why this is x power 7 x power 3 and a constant the rest are zeros then you have x equal to negative 2 as the root there are four the procedure remains the same, bring this one here to come up with that one. Then 1 times negative 2 gives you negative 2 which is put here. Then add this and this to get up with negative 2. Then negative 2 times this gives you positive 4. This plus this gives you positive 4. Positive 4 times this gives you negative 8. Then this and this gives you negative 8. Negative 8 times 2 gives you positive 16. This plus this gives you negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 gives you positive 2. 0 plus this gives you positive 2. Positive 2 times negative 2 gives you negative 4. This plus this gives negative 4. Negative 4 times this gives you negative 8. Sorry, positive 8. Then this plus this gives you 24. Now this last value is what we call the remainder. So we come and conclude that when px divided by x plus 2, the remainder is 24. So now we shall go to question 9, which came from your name 1990, paper 1, question 2a, and says the polynomial this has factors this and this. Find the values of p and q and then factorize the polynomial completely. So the first thing to do is to let px be equal to that given polynomial. Then for this factor, x is equal to 1, therefore p negative 1 will be equal to 0. So we shall come up with equation 1. Then for x plus 2 equal to 0, the x will be equal to negative 2, therefore p negative 2 will be equal to 0. And when I simplify, I'll come up with equation 2 as that. So those are two equations to unknown. So equation 2 minus equation 1 will give me 3p equal to 12. Therefore, p will be equal to 4. From equation, this is what from. So from equation 1, we have that. Therefore, q will be equal to negative 6, negative 16. Then for the hence part, px will now be equal to that. Therefore, we have to do long division. The divisor will be this. So when I expand it, it will become that. So now that I have the polynomial and the divisor, I can carry out long division. Put the divisor here, put the polynomial here. So to start the division, this divided by this gives you x squared. Then x squared multiplied by the divisor throughout will give you that line. Therefore, when I subtract the 2, I'll come up with that. Then we repeat the division. This divide by this is positive x. Therefore, x multiplied by this throughout will give me that. Then subtract the 2, you'll come up with 
that then still the whole of this divided by this will give you negative six negative six multiplied throughout by the divisor will give you that subtract the two you'll come up with none because this cancels this cancels this cancels there's no remainder therefore px will be equal to this plus this plus that so this one is what we call this and these two form the divisor which is already factorized so i can factor so when i factorize this one i'll come up with this so in the end i'll factorize completely so that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching and be reminded that the next video will be on series or arithmetic and geometric progressions so therefore if you have not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video on series has been uploaded and also if you know of any student who's not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that all benefit a family